Good afternoon, everyone. We're going to be getting started with this session real shortly. I just have two housekeeping announcements to um, give to you guys. We have extended the transportation hours to the airport. So the shuttles are actually going to start at 3 a.m. in the morning on Saturday and Sunday, and will go until 10 p.m. On Saturday, they will, they will run every half hour, and on Sunday, they will run every hour. Um, that's as much as we can extend, but I'm hoping that covers everybody to be able to get to the airport. The other thing, too, is you will be receiving an email from me, always from me, um, <laughs> with the link for a survey. Um, we would love to get feedback from you guys about this conference, um, just so we know how to make ourselves do it better, or if there's things that you guys really liked about this conference that we can incorporate for future conferences. So thank you very much, and I will ask Miriam to come up. So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Miriam Alderman, the Deputy Director of TEFUNET, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the closing and awards ceremony for this, the 10th biannual TEFUNET Global Scientific Conference. <laughs> so we gather together every two years to discuss and exchange ideas on new initiatives and upcoming trends in field epidemiology, to network, to provide a platform for current and future disease detectives to share their field work, and last but certainly not least, to celebrate our cultures and our diversity during International Night. I believe that we've achieved all that we intended during the past several days. I was inspired and motivated by the words of our keynote speaker, Dr. Rebecca Martin, on Tuesday at the launch of the Global Field Epidemiology Roadmap. As Dr. Martin aptly quoted, what got you here will not get you there. We are poised and ready to build upon the successes of our FETP community and to overcome long-term systemic challenges through the guidance of the strategic leadership group in the FETP enterprise. We've also had the opportunity to, to discuss current strategies on the One Health approach and on border health. And we've enjoyed numerous high-quality presentations from our FETP trainees and alumni in fact, trainees and alumni have given 104 oral presentations and 93 poster presentations over the course of the past few days. Shortly, we, we will award the best of these presentations and announce programs accredited during the fourth cycle of TEFUNET accreditation. To begin the ceremony, I'd like to invite a couple of speakers representing the U.S. Centers for Disease Control as well as the host FETP. Our first speaker, Dr. Kasha Fijaz, is a longtime friend and partner of TEFUNET. He currently serves on the TEFUNET Advisory Board as the CDC liaison. Dr. Fijaz is the Principal Deputy Director for the Division of Global Health Protection in the Center for Global Health at the U.S. CDC. The division is at the forefront of implementation of the Global Health Security Agenda. And Dr. Fijaz is a member of the division's senior leadership and oversees the science and research agenda. So please welcome. Thank you, Miriam, um, for a generous introduction. Um, it is indeed my honor and privilege um, to be here today, uh, and uh, it's a great opportunity to participate in this TEFINET's 10th Global Scientific Conference. Um, I've actually attended these meetings in the past as well, and it's always a pleasure, and again, it has been a pleasure this year, although I could not attend the entire conference, but I, the sessions that I was actually at, they were very, very uh, impressive uh, with, with, a, with a wide array of presentations that were presented. In, uh, in relation to the field epi training programs, um, with the professional network of about 71 field epidemiology training programs across more than 100 countries, uh, there is no doubt that FETP and its associated programs are a major force in the advancement of global health security. Through the years, the FETP has helped countries develop a cadre of local public health workers, each with necessary skills to collect, analyze, and interpret data. 
and also to contribute to evidence-based decisions that for the policymakers and manage responses to humanitarian crises and disease outbreaks. With half of TEFINET's member programs granting degrees and roughly about a third offering a medical specialty in field or applied epidemiology, FETP addresses the shortage of skilled epidemiologists, public health workforce, and then also helps improve efficiency of national public health institutes and ministries of health by helping build a stronger public health workforce. The importance of FETP in achieving global health security cannot be overemphasized. As the world relies on skilled workers at every level to protect our health, recognize risks, and make effective decisions. Developing a workforce of skilled field epidemiologists, laboratory staff, and mid-level managers often falls under the purview of countries, national public health institutes, or the ministries of health. In turn, a country's ability to build robust national public health institutes relies on skilled staff to implement surveillance and response activities. A perfect fit for the FETP graduates. We have seen in many programs how FETPs have actually contributed to the public health workforce. I'll just give a couple of examples. We see this in programs such as the one in Rwanda, where graduates help train more than 300 mid-level district public health staff on surveillance and outbreak response. Together, trainees and graduates of this program have investigated more than 43 outbreaks, conducted more than 40 surveillance improvement projects, presented at more than 40 scientific conferences locally and internationally, and authored and co-authored more than 30 manuscripts. Another example is Zambia, which is one of the oldest FETPs in Africa. It serves as another example of, of field epidemiology training program's potential. With minimal technical assistance with CDC, or from CDC, the Zambia FETP graduates now help establish other FETPs in other countries in Africa. So the accomplishments of FETP programs have helped slow the global insecurity through expansion of public health workforce in both infectious and non-infectious diseases around the globe. With almost 80% of FETP graduates continuing to serve public health programs and as public health leaders, countries see a return in their investment in real time. We have seen this in the Ebola epidemic of West Africa, where the field epi training program graduates as well as um, the, the, the residents have actually contributed to the response. And we continue to see that even in the current uh, Ebola outbreak in DRC. In addition to that, um, the FETPs have actually contributed to eradication of diseases and or, or progressing the eradication of diseases like polio through the NSTOP program and, and, and also some of the countries actually have their own um, you know, stop, uh, stop transmission of polio programs in their own countries where polio is still endemic and they have actually been a very, very instrumental to that effort. As I reflect on this conference, um, I. I just asked Tina to share a few numbers, and I just want to share those with you, which is a testament to the TEFINET's ability to bring all the field epi training programs around the globe together. At this conference, there were 582 participants from 81 countries. There were 525 abstracts submitted. 213 of these abstracts were accepted. So it's a, it's a pretty competitive process, as you can see. There were 12 pre-conference interactive learning sessions. There were three plenary sessions and seven keynote presenters. 10 topic areas for the field epi training presentations included infectious, in, in, infections transmitted through food and water, vector-borne diseases, public health surveillance, maternal and child health, animal health, antimicrobial resistance, and healthcare-related infections, occupational and environmental health, chronic disease and injury, vaccine preventable diseases, viral hepatitis, and HIV. So I want, I want all of us to, to give a round of applause uh, for this tremendous achievement. <laughs> so as we continue to implement uh, FETP in new parts of the world and strengthen existing programs, we must understand that our great work does not stop at preventing, detecting, and responding to threats at home and in neighboring countries. Our successes and impact must be documented through publications, 
to expand our evidence base by improving our scientific integrity and rigor and publishing on protocol developments, outbreak investigations, and best practices. We help advance the science of public health. I, I, I just want to share a personal um, anecdote that I actually, there was, there was a time when I was actually involved with uh, an FETP resident. Um, this was an outbreak investigation that I was involved in, um, you know, along with a couple of EIS officers in Kenya. And we were one week through with, um, with doing this investigation at, at uh, Kenyatta National Hospital. And then suddenly we stumbled upon this uh, young um, resident who was just coming back from vacation. And he was ha trying to work on somewhat similar project that we were actually there to investigate. And he had not been getting a lot of traction in terms of um, you know, support uh, in, in helping move his um, uh, master's thesis far forward. So, so we actually were, I actually said, well, let's just stop everything because I w didn't want to take away the resident's project. And we actually uh, you know, engaged the resident as part of our team. Uh, and, and then the challenge that I had was we had an EIS officer and I also had an FETP resident. So, um, so I actually had to do a little bit of negotiation as to who's going to be the first author and the second author on the paper because those things are always very important. Um, and then um, you know, we actually had him join um, our team with, uh, with um, permission from his supervisor. And then we ended up doing the outbreak investigation and doing a publication related to that. And now the same resident has been serving as a resident advisor um, in, in a couple of countries he has already served in. So this is, this is, this is um, an example where a resident actually, I was, I was really impressed um, by, by his contribution to the outbreak investigation. We certainly learned from him, and I'm, I'm hoping that he also learned from us. Uh, but but um, you know, the value of the program that it actually brings to the country itself and, and to the overall public health workforce is, is really, really important. So I, I encourage all of you to continue to learn and develop using what the FETP program has taught you and taking it a step further. Use the resources available to you, including your FETP colleagues, and now with the, uh, with the media and social media, with Tefi Connect, learning strategies, which could be also distance-based learning and innovation that you can bring into your own programs. Um, that is something that I would encourage all of us to, all of us to use. Um, so I'm really grateful to be part of uh, the FETP legacy that has been built and continues to be built. And as we continually work to achieve our goals from global security, taking pride in knowing the role you play in making this happen. Thank you once again for your continued efforts to make this world a better place. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Ujaz, for reminding us about the importance of the work that we're doing. And now I'd like to invite Dr. Eric Pevsner to the stage to provide remarks on behalf of the Epidemic Intelligence Service as a host country FETP. Dr. Pevsner has quickly become a valued partner of TEFINET. He currently serves as a member of our TEFINET Advisory Scientific Committee. He's the chief for the Epidemiology Workforce Branch in the Division of Scientific Education and Professional Development and Chief of the Epidemic Intelligence Service EIS program at the US CDC. Please. Thank you. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be able to speak to you today uh, on behalf of the EIS program. And we're, it's a great honor to have been able to co-host uh, the conference. I don't know if all of you are aware, but the meeting was also actually supposed to be held in another country and for a lot of complicated reasons that fell through. And I think that a tremendous amount of credit and thanks should go to the staff at TEFINET. In particular, I want to just call out two people. One is Amber Ellithorpe over here. And Angela Hilmer is over here on my left. Who, how, how many people have ever been involved in planning a meeting? If you could raise your hands. Okay, so a number of you. So if you haven't, it's always way more work than you ever imagine it can be. And so I think the fact that the TEFINET group was able to pull together 
an international meeting of this magnitude in a very consolidated period of time is really impressive. And I think just another round of applause to them for pulling off an incredible meeting. So that was the first thing I wanted to say. And I just have two other uh, main points. The next point I want to share with you just builds on what Dr. Copeland was saying as one of our keynote speakers, that as applied epidemiologist or field epidemiology, our goal is always to be thinking about making a difference. Making a difference in everything that we do so that whether you're here as a trainee or a teacher or just a participant, we're getting ready to get out some awards to recognize what we view as the most celebrated or impressive talks here at the conference. And it is time to celebrate people that have truly been exceptional. But it's not enough. It's great for us to come together and celebrate excellence in scientific quality and presentation. But hopefully everybody here has had the opportunity to meet someone, to hear something, see something that has inspired you that when you return home, you can take something to think about how you can do more with the work that you're doing. And I think that's the challenge that Dr. Copeland sent out before all of us, because it's never enough to be satisfied with the work that we're doing, because no matter how hard we work and how good the quality of our product, people are still suffering for a number of conditions and they need our help. So I hope that you can rise up to that challenge. And the third point I just wanted to share, because I got asked a lot about this during the meeting, it ends up being a huge part of my job at CDC, is people are always coming and asking, you know, EIS has been around since 1951, and a lot of people want to know, what is it about EIS that makes it so special? And what makes EIS so special is you. And I say that because all of you, how many people here, if you could raise your hand, if you're a current trainee of an FUTP program? And keep your hand up, please. How many people here are an alum of an FUTP program? Okay. So almost everybody here in the room. EIS's strength is people like you. We have people that go through our training program. They learn a lot. They feel a great deal of thanks for having been able to have the opportunity for this training. And the way they decide to give it back is to then go ahead and be our supervisors, or to contact the program and offer projects, or offer to mentor our trainees. So the strength of the EIS program are people like you. And so I hope that all of you will recognize, just as EIS graduating officers recognize, is how fortunate all of us are to be part of TAFUNET and to be part of an FATP program. And the way to strengthen your own FETP program is to reach out to them and to ask how you can help. Can you bring project or opportunities to learn for your trainees? Can you offer to help supervise or provide mentoring to a trainee in your country so that when you graduate, it is the beginning of your continual process of learning and giving back to your FETP program? And I think the more that all of us do that, the more that we can build on what is our true strength, which is all of us continuing to be both students and teachers in strengthening the field of applied epidemiology. So I hope all of you will take that challenge and continue to build on the programs in your respective countries as we continue to strengthen this incredible network that is TAFINET. Thank you. Hebsner. And now I'd like to introduce Dr. Carl Reddy, Director of TEFINET, to present the results of the fourth cycle of TEFINET's accreditation of FETPs. Please come to the stage. Okay, uh, thank you, Miriam. May I please call upon the following people uh, to the stage, please. Uh, Dr. Ma Wilai, Director of the China FETP. Uh, Dr. Ernest Kenu, Director of the Ghana FELTP. Uh, Professor Abdel Munim Belalia, Director of Morocco FETP. 
and Dr. Mirza Amir Beg, Technical Coordinator of FELTP Pakistan. There's one. There you go. <laughs> Flicking all over for you. Okay. Okay. Um, Tefinet is pleased to announce that the following programs have been accredited by the global accreditation body, which met on Sunday here on the sidelines of the conference. So, without further ado, I'd like to say, you know, con. Congratulations to the four programs and to emphasize that uh, gaining accreditation is one victory, but the next uh, victory is to maintain accreditation. And just to remind you of that, uh, that requirement, congratulations. Congratulations. So the tradition is that at every Tefinet Global Conference, uh, we, we like to acknowledge the host program and the host country. And in order to do that, I would like to present Dr. Eric Pevsner with this plaque on behalf of Tefinet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Miriam. Thank you, you're welcome. And now I'd like to introduce the remaining awards presenters and invite them to the stage. First, Dr. Martin Kirk. Dr. Martin Kirk is currently the interim chair of the Tefinet Advisory Board and has served as an advisory board member for the past few years. He is a professor of Applied Epidemiology and National Health and Medical Research Council Fellow at the Australian National University in Canberra, Australia. Prior to this position, Dr. Kirk ran the Australian Field Epidemiology Training Program. Thank you. <laughs> Next, Dr. Carmen Varela Santos. Dr. Carmen Varela Santos serves as the ECDC liaison on TEFINET's advisory board and has more recently taken on representative roles on the TEFINET Advisory Scientific Committee and the FETP Learning Advisory Council. As head of the public health training section since July 2016, Carmen Varela Santos is responsible for the strategic direction of the ECDC fellowship program and the continuous professional development program. Please come up on stage, please. And may I also invite Dr. Angela Hilmers, our Senior Associate Sec Director for Science, on stage to help with the distribution of awards. Uh, 
Okay, so now we begin with presentations of awards. Please consult the Book of Abstracts to read more about the selection procedures for all of these awards. For the awardees, when I announce your name, please come up to the stage via the stairs on the right over here. You'll receive your award, then have the opportunity to shake hands with each of our awards presenters and take a group picture, and then you can exit this way, stage left. So first, the recipients of the TEFINET Travel Grant for Environmental Epidemiology for Planetary Health in memory of James Minlin. For the first time, TEFINET was honored to offer this travel grant to two authors for studies on environmental epidemiology and planetary health. I'd like to invite Carmen to say a few words about this award. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a bit of a special moment for me. So first of all, I want to say uh, big thanks from the bottom of my heart to Tefinet, which uh, for me it has had a very personal and important uh, meaning as I met uh, Jim in the first conference uh, in Canada. Uh, so planetary health has been defined as the health of the human civilization and the natural systems on which it depends. Epidemiological studies and monitoring of health determinants are essential to tackle the impact of human societies on our ecosystems and environment. The complexity of the problem with water, land, air, and climate potentially affected warrants an interdisciplinary approach, where the global network of training programs in epidemiology and public health interventions, TEFINET, can play an important role. These two grants intend to promote interdisciplinary collaborations applied to the analysis of environmental determinants for both communicable and non-communicable diseases, health impact assessment, management of natural disasters, and preparedness for climate-related health events. The grants honor Jim Mendley and his legacy in field epidemiology training. With his patience and care, Jim thrived mentoring and guiding fellows of different programs in Brazil, China, Egypt, and Jordan, to mention some. His values and ethics shaped his holistic vision of public health, making him a passionate and compassionate advocate of sustainability. Jim's work on the health impact of environmental risks made him aware of the responsibility we have as individuals and as a society to protect our environment, and in this way, our health, and that of future generations. So it's really my pleasure to present the award. The, the first place recipient uh, is Simon Packer, recent graduate of the United Kingdom Field Epidemiology Training Program for the study determining the utility of national real-time ambulance syndromic surveillance to identify and monitor the adverse health impact of extreme weather events and seasonal respiratory infections in England. So, Simon. The second place recipient is Dr. Tamuno Wari Numbere, recent graduate of the Nigeria Field Epidemiology and Laboratory Training Program for the study. For the study, a comparative study on the influence of industrial air pollution on the prevalence and risk factors for asthma among children in River State, Nigeria, May 2019.
Thank you, Carmen, and congratulations. Now we will announce the winners of the photo contest. So first, we have the fourth place Facebook winner, Rania Atia. Next, the third place, the conference winner, Liu Boshi. Next, we have the second place winner, Mohammed Bashir. <laughs> And finally, the first place winner, Nunki Adzani, or someone from Indonesia, FETP. If there's someone here from the Indonesia FETP, um, if, if Nunki is not here, you may come up and uh, accept the certificate. No one? Okay. <laughs> oh. Okay. So Tefinet will hold this and make sure that Nunki receives this at a later date. All right, we're going to move on to our poster presentation awards. So, first, for the best poster presentation by an FETP frontline fellow or recent graduate. We have Amivi Mousi Godonu. And by the way, recent graduate refers to an FETP graduate who graduated after January 1st, 2017. Our next award 
is for the best poster presentation by an FETP intermediate or advanced fellow or recent graduate. And this award goes to Chandresh Ladva. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dr. Eric Pepsner is no accepting. To which program. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> Now we move on to the oral presentation awards. So for the best oral presentation by an FETP frontline fellow or recent graduate, the award goes to Naliqua Bonaya. Next, we have the best oral presentation by an FETP intermediate or advanced fellow or recent graduate. And that award goes to Hendrik Kempfor. And next, we have the best oral presentation by an FETP alumnus or alumna. Of note, one of the presenters, Martin Kirk, has withdrawn his presentation from consideration because in his presentation included published data. The winner is Mabel Awar. So next, we have the Dionisio Herrera Guiber Award for the Best Applied Public Health Intervention. This award recognizes work that best exemplifies an outstanding public health intervention in which field epidemiology leads to improvement in a country's surveillance system. All abstracts submitted for presentation at the 10th TEFINET Global Scientific Conference and that describe public health interventions are eligible to be considered for this award. This award has been a long-standing tradition at TEFINET conferences. 
Beginning this year, we have renamed it in honor of our visionary leader and generous friend, Dr. Dionisio Jose Herrera Guibert, who served as the director of TAFINET from 2009 to 2018. Dr. Herrera embodied passion, optimism, and kindness which guided his work and served as a foundation for all that he was able to accomplish in advancing TEFINET and its mission during his tenure. So this award, the Dionisio Herrera Guibert Award for Best Applied Public Health Intervention goes to Vishal Takur. Thank you, and congratulations to all the awardees. Now may I invite Dr. Carl Reddy up for concluding remarks. Thank you. Okay. Um, good afternoon again, everybody. This conference would not have been possible without the support and the assistance of many people and organizations, including the Centers for Disease Control, the Task Force for Global Health, the cooperation of our regional networks, AFINET, EMFNET, SafetyNet, RedSec, RedSUR, uh, EPIET, the ECDC, Public Health England, and perhaps most importantly, you, the participants. Last but not least, I'd like to thank the TEFINET team for all their hard work and efforts in putting this conference together. In fact, I'd like them to stand up and to have a round of applause. We hope that you have benefited from the knowledge exchange opportunities provided by this conference and that you have enjoyed the social activities as well. We shall certainly provide more rice at future global conferences. Okay. Con <laughs> conferences like this are like New Year's resolutions. There's lots of good intent and, and well wishes but we need to be organized and to follow up on the relevant suggestions and great ideas that have been raised and discussed. This is particularly relevant given the roadmap of the FETP enterprise and the formation of the SLG leadership. We shall keep you updated of developments in terms of the SLG and the, and the roadmap via the TEFINET, the TEFICONNECT platform. You know when you've had a good conference, when you've networked with colleagues and friends from around the world, when you've learned new ideas and suddenly have a new perspective on things, when you have that hollow feeling at the end of an intense, enjoyable experience. I'm sure most of you have this hollow feeling right now, because I certainly do. And on behalf of TEFINET, our funders and collaborators, stakeholders, I'd like to wish you all safe travel back to your home and to remind you to please stay connected. And thank you very much, and we look forward to seeing you all in two years' time. Thank you very much. <laughs>